So we're in the studio today to talk about this guy, the brand new iPad Pro. Now we got it when it first came out, we unboxed it here on the channel, and I've been using it for a month now as an alternative to my fully loaded 2017 MacBook Pro because Apple wants you to believe this iPad Pro can replace your laptop. Can it? I guess we're about to find out. Let's talk about it. Apple did a really good job of marketing the iPad and also talking about how many changes they've brought to it. And I think the line they used was, it's the biggest change to iPad since iPad. And that's honestly true to an extent. They've redesigned the hardware, they've beefed up the internals, and they've even made some subtle changes to its productivity accessories to make it a more complete package. And there are definitely some things that the iPad does really well. Let's start with that hardware redesign. Hardware-wise, the iPad is really, really nice. Um, there's really no other way to sum it up besides that. As soon as you hold it, you know that it's crafted really well and a lot of thought and time went into the design of the new iPad. Um, a lot of times whenever I have a new piece of hardware, phone, tablet, laptop, whatever it is, the first thing I really notice, especially on phones and tablets, is the screen. On the iPad, the first thing I noticed was how thin and light it is. It's, it's crazy. The iPad weighs in at just under 1.5 pounds and it's 5.9 millimeters thin. Whenever you consider how good the internal hardware is on this iPad, it's an engineering marvel to think that this tablet is so thin, but at the same time so powerful. And another thing that I want to mention, the speakers on the iPad are even better than last generations and it's still got thinner. So that on its own is pretty cool, but the fact that it's so dimensionally small and light just takes it to a whole new level. It's got a front-facing camera built into the Face ID module, which we will definitely get to later. And on the back, you have a single lens. It's your standard f1.8 aperture, 12 megapixel camera, although it takes decently good photos for a tablet, and you can even record video in 4K at up to 30 frames per second. This is cool and all, but I don't really know too many people who would use an iPad or a tablet in general at that for photography. I mean, I know there may be some people out there who want just the bigger display real estate to see what they're actually capturing, but in today's world, a lot of people will just pull out their cell phones to take a photo. So rear camera is actually pretty good, um, but I don't, I don't see people using it day to day. Another really cool, notable mention, there is now USB-C as the main form of charging for the iPad Pro. So lightning is officially gone and it's been replaced with USB Type-C. Now this is good for multiple reasons. Obviously one, USB-C is the new universal standard for ports moving forward. And Apple's been kind of stuck on the lightning train for a while and I've been waiting for them to finally make the change on one of their devices that isn't a MacBook. So this could be the beginning of the end for the lightning port, you never know. But the other benefit is you can also use it to transfer data with other USB-C accessories, or you can use your iPad and plug it into a monitor with a USB-C cable. So this is all cool, 100% transparency with you guys. I don't have any USB Type-C accessories other than um, Pixel Buds. Those work to listen to music because there is no headphone jack. Um, but I do not have a USB-C camera, I do not have a USB-C monitor, so I wasn't able to test that feature. And another important thing to note, the USB-C cable that Apple includes in the box, that's not going to be the cable you can actually use to transfer your data or your audio video to a monitor. You will probably need a better USB-C cable for that. But still, USB-C is here on the iPad Pro, and I'm hoping that means next year it's here on the iPhone. But there are also some subtle changes under the hood that no one can really see whenever they're holding the iPad. One such case is the fact that Apple is now incorporating a lot more magnets in the inside design of the iPad Pro. So there's 102 precisely placed magnets designed to increase reliability and connectivity of the iPad Pro's productivity accessories and accessories in general. So on my iPad Pro, I have the Apple Pencil and I have the Smartfolio keyboard. The three-pronged attachment system has now been moved from the side of the iPad to the back of the iPad. And the Smartfolio keyboard works with that three-pronged system and all the magnets, and it creates a much sturdier snap once you bring the two accessories together. I found that the iPad Pro on the Folio keyboard is a lot more stable compared to the last generation's Pro with keyboard. And my favorite part about this new magnetic system is how the Apple Pencil works with it now. So instead of you pairing the Apple Pencil by plugging it into the lightning port, which let's be honest, is kind of goofy, you now bring the Apple Pencil close to the right side of the iPad Pro and it magnetically attaches to the iPad and 
it charges that way and it also pairs that way. So whenever you're using the iPad Pro, if you have a pencil, it's no longer in the way, like you're no longer holding it or fiddling with it or you have to keep track of it on a desk or something like that. It attaches right to the top of the iPad while you're using it on the keyboard and it doesn't go anywhere. I've shooken the iPad, I haven't thrown it, but I have shaken the iPad and the pencil does not fall off. And the cool part is it constantly stays charged. So you don't see the magnets, but they definitely add benefit to the overall iPad design. It's, it's really cool. I think my favorite part of the hardware redesign though has to be the new display. So it comes rocking Apple's new liquid retina display technology. It's essentially fancy terminology for saying this is a super, super color accurate LCD display. But something that I really like about it is Apple's pushed out all the bezels, they've removed the home button, and they've implemented this fancy way of tuning each pixel in order to create rounded corners. So it's an LCD, and LCD displays are square by default. The pixels require individual tuning in order to create that rounded effect, and they have to be tuned properly, otherwise you'll get a really ugly looking rounded display. But Apple did it really, really well. They proved they could do it on the iPhone XR, so I had no doubt whenever the rumor started spreading for the new iPad Pro. And another cool part about the display, the bezels are just thick enough to fit in a Face ID module without creating a notch. So you have an iPad Pro with minimal bezels, no home button, Face ID, no notch, and Face ID works in any orientation. And if you happen to make the mistake of covering up the camera like I do all the time, you'll get a little uh, arrow that'll pop up on the screen and it'll let you know that the camera's covered. As soon as you uncover it, it identifies your face and unlocks. And you can even do this while holding the iPad upside down. Why didn't this display technology, or I'm sorry, Face ID technology come to the iPhone? I have no idea, but I'm glad it's on the iPad and I'm glad that the display looks uniform and amazing. So the display is really cool, but I think the real star of the show with the new iPad Pro is just how much of a performer it is. And that's thanks to the A12X Bionic chip. This chip is a custom version of the chip found in the iPhone XS and it's beastly. It's got an octa-core CPU with a seven-core GPU, and Apple states that it's faster than 92% of most portable PCs. Some of those models have i7 processors, and if you look at the benchmark scores of the A12X processor, the scores are nuts. And whenever you combine that performance with the fact that the iPad Pro brings back the 120 hertz refresh rate, this iPad is butter. And not only is it butter, it's super, super powerful. And you can tell that Apple's really focusing on this whole mobile platform push because at the keynote for the new iPad Pro, they showed a demo of, I believe it was NBA Live 19. I can't remember what kind of NBA game it was. I don't think it was 2K, I think it was NBA Live. If anyone remembers, remind me in the comment section down below. But they showed a NBA game of, and, and someone was playing it on the new iPad Pro and Apple was talking about how this iPad has power to compete with some of the top gaming consoles out there. And like I said before, they talked about how it's faster than 92% of portable PCs. So yeah, it's a beast. And on top of that, Adobe is now making a push to bring some of their Creative Suite applications to the iPad Pro. I believe in 2019, Photoshop full-fledged Photoshop is now going to be a thing on the iPad Pro, and they even demoed that at the keynote, and the iPad Pro is able to render or edit a massive, massive image file without skipping a beat. So it's powerful, but its operating system is its biggest hindrance, which we're gonna talk about now. I know it kinda sounds weird to say, but iOS 12, while it is great software, it's also what's limiting the iPad Pro the most. So iOS as a whole just seems to have this really big iPhone first focus, right? It's, it's built for the iPhone, the iPad came after the iPhone, and iOS was developed specifically for the iPhone when it first came out, and then whenever the iPad came out, it, it just essentially took on a jumbo version of iOS. And that's great and all whenever the first few iPads were out, but now the iPad Pro has gotten to a point where it's so powerful that if you're going to compare it to desktops or mobile PCs and say that this iPad is now more powerful than those, you should equip it with software that can actually utilize all that power, right? It's, 
it's in a way, think about if you had a Ferrari, like a really, really nice 2018 red, I don't know, Ferrari F430 Spider, right? But you're stuck in a school zone and you can only go 20 miles per hour. What's the point of having the Ferrari's ridiculously powerful engine? So iOS is great. It works really well on the iPhone. I just think the time has come that Apple should potentially look into putting a different operating system on the iPad. I don't want to say that I want Mac OS on the iPad. I have a Mac. I don't know how well that would go with the iPad considering the iPad's touchscreen and Apple strayed from putting touchscreens on a Mac so they don't hinder that software experience. So I feel like, and I know this is never going to happen, but I hope that Apple starts creating their own tablet-like software, which is a good mix of some cool features from macOS and some cool features from iOS, because as it stands right now, if you can get all of your work done using iOS, then the new iPad Pro is perfect. But if you need the essentials that come with a Mac, then the iPad Pro might not be the best fit for you, and that's, that only comes down to its operating system, not any other type of shortcoming. Now, I'm not saying that Apple fully has to go out and develop their own tablet, desktop, hybrid software type of thing. I feel like, and I mentioned this earlier, I feel like this whole push that they're making now for mobile operating systems, um, and they're trying to bring full-fledged desktop class software, desktop class productivity software at that. I mean, can you imagine if Apple managed to work with Adobe and bring the full-blown, I mean, Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, After Effects, I don't know, whatever else they have. Can you imagine if they managed to bring all that to iOS so you can do all that stuff on your iPad Pro? In that instance, I would definitely say that having iOS on the iPad Pro would make it worth it because you could still run your desktop applications on it. As it stands right now though, we're not really there and that's what makes the iPad so difficult to recommend as a full-blown computer replacement. And that kind of brings us to the price of the new iPad Pro in both of its sizes and whether or not it's worth it overall. So the 64 gig 11 inch iPad Pro for Wi-Fi only starts at $799. And if you want to up it to the now 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it's $999. So if you want to get the bigger version of the new iPad Pro in 64 gigs of storage and Wi-Fi, you're at least spending $1,000 pre-tax. If you want to throw in the cool keyboard, it's another $199. If you want to throw in the pencil, it's another $129. And just think about if you wanted to add LTE or up this thing to what's the max on it? One terabyte? One terabyte of storage? Cool part about the one terabyte of storage though, you get up from four gigs of RAM to six gigs of RAM. Don't know how much that means to you, but hey, maybe it'll help you spring for the one terabyte. Anyways, you get my point. The iPad Pro is not cheap. And there are other options out there, including some MacBooks, once you start maxing out the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So is it worth it to have something that's as expensive as a MacBook Pro running iOS, not a full-fledged desktop operating system, for the sake of it being super portable and for the sake of it being super light and you can basically take it anywhere with you? Right now, no. I'm not gonna say a definitive no, because like I said, in the future, if Apple starts bringing more desktop class software to this thing, it could actually be worth it for the types of people out there who are traveling all the time and need super light, super portable, but at the same time, super powerful. So the iPad Pro is one of those products that fits a very, very small amount of people who can actually make this product work. But for the general masses out there, the regular iPad that starts at like 329 or just a MacBook is going to get the job done for them. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know what you thought about in the comment section. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. They've definitely made a design re a design rechange. I was going to say like a design redesign. Does that make sense? <laughs> design a design redesign. Something I That's the, exactly. <laughs> yeah.